House of Cards fans rejoice. Well, the newest episode of the show just dropped, although it might not be what you think. So actor Kevin Spacey joined Tucker Carlson in character as the political juggernaut Frank Underwood in a strange interview. Let's take a look at some of that. 2024 has not even begun yet, and it does seem like the presidential race is effectively frozen in place, if not over. We know who the candidates are. It's too late for another to get in. Some have already dropped out. But is it too late? Is there anyone in this country of 350 million people who could jump in at this late date and re-scramble the calculus of electoral politics? Well, there may be someone. And in fact, you already know him. You know his face. And the question is, will he get in this cycle? And that's my question for you. Well, that's really a decision for the people, Tucker. It's not something that I really think about or want to do. And Merry Christmas to you, too. In addition to discussing a potential Underwood run, the pair also talked about Underwood's, or I mean Kevin Spacey's, <laughs> thoughts on uh, several political topics. So it is bizarre that they decided to publicly cut ties with me on allegations alone, allegations that have now been proven false, because I don't think there's any question. Netflix exists because of me. I put them on the map and they tried to put me in the ground. Do, do you think within Netflix and the leadership suites that your influence is still felt? Well, according to your research, my influence is felt every time every customer opens the app. I'd say that's pretty powerful. Oh, that's true. When are you getting back to work, by the way? Oh, I've been back at work from the moment we started talking, Tucker. So does that mean this is like an episode or is it real? Well, it's probably a little of both. So uh, Kevin Spacey obviously uh, was fired by Netflix after uh, multiple accusations of sexual uh, misconduct against uh, the, the actor Anthony Rapp, I believe, filed one. Uh, there were other people as well. He was acquitted uh, in every trial, every proceeding that transpired after that, um, totally acquitted. So now talking in character, that was his character on the, the show House of Cards. Uh, and he used to, I, he does this every year around Christmas. He gives uh, an address as Larry, uh, as Larry Underwood, as the character, which I know has, has made people, has made people's heads explode year after year when he was still, you know, under uh, legal water facing all these accusations. But at the end of the day, he was acquitted. So he can do whatever he wants, and he uh, he maintained his innocence, and uh, there was not, you know, a presumption, you're innocent until proven guilty, are you not? Yeah, I think there are a lot of people that recognize Kevin Spacey can afford very good lawyers, and there are people who potentially are very guilty, and because they have such good lawyers, they're able to get off scot-free. So, I don't know, it's really tough when you have so much firsthand testimony that he did these things, and then the court decides in this way. Uh, it's kind of shocking, but for him to go on and, and do this interview at Tucker Carlson and bring the character back, I think it reminds me of when we had actors recently on strike and you had these production companies really wanting to own the, the likeness of them to be able to use them to recreate their performances with AI to produce advertisements and, and photos for marketing of the media. I think that's really scary. But it's, it's interesting that they don't own the rights to Kevin Spacey's character, Frank Underwood, and he's allowed to kind of perform in character. It kind of begs the question, if someone else were to cast him in a film and he were to act as a similar character, would that be okay? It's very interesting from the intellectual property perspective. But, uh, you know, I think House of Cards viewers were unsettled enough that there were allegations that they really didn't want to watch him in the character anymore. I don't know. Can we separate uh, the the artist from the art? In the case of Kevin Spacey, I think he was playing such a dark character that, that maybe that's why they couldn't. Well, I, I do really believe in trying to celebrate, uh, trying to separate, rather, the art and artist. I, I think it's, I think you get into a weird place if you have to like and agree with all of a, a creator of, of art, uh, uh, like and agree with all their politics, all their moral behavior in order to en endorse the finished product, gets you into some weird places that like, if we're being consistent, that no one can clear. So I, I, I am a big believer in separating those two things. 
Uh, but at the same time, in this case, I'm not sure it's even necessary because I mean, you're absolutely allowed to persist in your view that he was guilty of the accusations. Um, I, I'm not trying to delegitimize that. That's fine. I mean, he was. It was multiple court proceedings, right? There was one. There was a one in the UK, and there was one here. Um, I, I'm sure money talks and helps you in in the legal um, system. I'm not like denying that. But at the end of the day, if you if you're found innocent like multiple times by by different jurisdictions, um, again, totally fine to persist in one's belief that he was actually guilty. But I, I don't know. At some point, it's just like that, that's the end of trying to. I, I don't know. You're just you are innocent in the eyes of the court. I don't know that you should. So Netflix took that action obviously before he was when he was accused before he was found guilty of anything. Now we're in a little bit with the Me Too stuff where where sometimes they're waiting like the uh, like um, Jonathan Majors the uh, the actor from the Marvel Cinematic Universe King He Who Remains he was just fired from Marvel uh, but they did wait until the court case and he was he was found guilty of of sexual uh, of, or of of a, not of sexual of just uh, of of uh, assault against uh, an ex girlfriend. Um, and, and they fired him subsequent to that. Uh, Netflix obviously took its action, and in other cases, actions have been taken merely at the accusation level. I think it probably does behoove an organization to wait for a verdict, and then if the verdict is is not guilty, I don't like if you're not obviously they, it's a private company you do whatever they want, but if you're not guilty under the legal system, I mean I don't know. Do you see what I'm getting at? <laughs> Yeah, I think that's what it is. Like, it's a it's a private company. They can decide what they want to do with their staff and what kind of disciplinary action they take. They can do their own kind of investigation and and talk to the people who have accused, you know, someone of doing something. But I, it's really hard for a, a private organization. This happens a lot on university campuses where you have a, a, a panel of people. Usually, they're pr professors or staff at the college or university and they have to decide something of extreme fate if there's an accusation of assault or sexual harassment or whatever it is, they review the evidence. These are not people who are, you know, members of the community selected to, to be a part of a jury. It's not a, a formal trial, but they, they make a very important decision. Sometimes if the student can continue to, to study at the university, if they have to leave. And so we're in a tricky space where I, we have to have our own form of justice where you know, sometimes the Justice Department and the courts in the United States are, are not up to par. You have so many cases that are decided by a judge without a trial by jury, which is something that's guaranteed by the Constitution. And this is like a regular everyday practice. You also have people, you know, withheld because they can't afford to pay cash bail. You shouldn't be allowed to be imprisoned if we believe in as the Constitution and many of our, our legal precedents say that you uh, – cannot have cruel and unusual punishment and that you actually are innocent until proven guilty in the United States. So it's a very complicated landscape. And I just, I don't know if universities and private institutions are equipped to make this decision, these decisions, but I also don't have a lot of faith in our formal judicial system either, Robbie. I think, yeah, the, uh, you know. the, the university adjudication practices, I, I used to do a lot of uh, reporting on, um, uh, for reason, the Title IX uh, campus sexual misconduct proceedings were just, were insane, uh, were, so, were Kafkaesque in terms of uh, due process, were uh, in, in many cases wildly unfair to both parties, frankly, to accused and accusers, had some truly pernicious um, extrajudicial ideas festering there. Um, they were reformed under the Trump administration, and then the reforms were swiftly undone, unfortunately, by the Biden administration. Um, yeah, I, I don't have any faith in those institutions to do fair investigations on this t subject. I don't really have a lot of, I, I don't know that a, a corporations HR team is going to necessarily do a, a great job e either or a job that is, I mean, depending on what you think is great, right? Obviously, they can do whatever. They can fire whoever they want. They don't have to employ anyone they don't want to employ. But should it be you know, fair to the person accused of something, I, I think we would, I mean, it should be fair to the accuser and the accused. I think most people would, uh, would, you know, would, recognize, um, would recognize that. And it, it's, I don't know, it starts to become, well, because you, know, you as a progressive probably believe that uh, the criminal justice system should be more progressive and people deserve rehabilitation. Isn't it weird then to say that, but they shouldn't, they don't deserve to have jobs? I, I like, right? Is it, aren't these things intentional a little bit? 
Yeah, I mean, I support a federal jobs guarantee. It's just what kind of a job will they have? Will they be a, a member of the media that becomes a role model for young children because they're playing this supermodel? Is that a, a job that someone's accused of these things that's gotten themselves into situations, you know, where they can be accused of these things, where there's some grounds for a case to be made against them? I don't know. Maybe that's something that if you run a superhero kind of Marvel uh, you know, cinematic universe, you are responsible for making that decision on behalf of the viewers. But I think, you know, Trump's reforms to the criminal justice system really just reaffirmed the fact that slavery is still legal constitutionally as punishment for a crime. They really made it a lot easier for private prisons to operate in the United States. There wasn't a lot of the kind of reform that we needed to make things fair for many people who can't afford attorneys, who can't afford to pay their cash bail. Um, even people, you know, facing charges like these, perhaps Robbie, if they were fired, they could bring a case against their employer for wrongful termination. You know, it would be a, a tough case to argue, but I can see that kind of thing happening moving forward. If, if we have so many people that are fired before it becomes time to have a trial by jury, if they ever even get one. But I think, yeah, as a progressive, I do believe in rehabilitation. But I think, you know, maybe having this conversation about someone, so many kids look up to as a role model Maybe it's better to have the rehabilitation be you get cast in a, a role in adult movies, movies that are mostly cons uh, consumed by adults. And I think rehabilitation needs to happen in in a way where you make things whole again and you have a conversation about it. But I don't know if having the conversation with the viewers of the Marvel franchise, which are mostly children, is appropriate. Hmm. So you're saying Kevin Spacey gets to have a job back, but maybe he's a fry cook or something. Actually, like he wanted to be in that one <laughs> Kevin Spacey movie, right? Uh, where the plastic bag blows in the wind. One of my, help me out here. Somebody, anybody remember? I don't know. That American one. Beauty, that's yeah, it. That's it. Build that's some it. infrastructure. Yeah. All right. Well, we, uh, uh, that is, does it for us for today. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we've got uh, at least one more show, maybe two more shows in 2023. I'll be back tomorrow with Brianna Joy Gray, and Jessica will be back on Friday, I believe, with Amber Duke. You won't want to miss true. that. Please like, share, and subscribe uh, wherever you can, and listen to us in podcast form. Download us, uh, print pictures of us for your wallpaper. Do whatever you want. It's all good. More rising tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.